One of the core messages that I've been trying to get across to all the men that we've worked with and served in the last two and a half years. And this has really become the foundation at which we're building this YouTube channel, in which we're building our coaching company, Rebuilt Recovery, off of. It is the belief that I have that the only path to overcoming your pornography addiction for good is to become the man that is no longer addicted to porn. And it's in that word become that we talk about a massive identity change that all men must walk through. We talk about the path to not quitting porn, not removing the habit out of your life, but becoming the man, becoming the individual that no longer needs to run to pornography to escape from himself, that no longer needs to use pornography as a crutch. Now yes, in that process of stepping into a new identity, you will quit porn. But if you make the quitting of the porn the goal, if you make stopping doing a behavior your primary objective when you're trying to overcome an addiction, Brother, in my opinion, what is going to end up happening is you're gonna transfer that addiction. You're gonna transfer that compulsive behavior to something else. That's why you need to transcend this. You need to elevate above the addiction and become the man that no longer operates in need of running to pornography. And I think that this takes us to the discussion of how do we play offense in our life? How do we play offense in our recovery versus always being on the defense? Now I hear from so many men every single week Frank, how do I manage temptations? How do I manage urges? What do I do when the triggers arise? What are the defensive strategies when I'm lonely, tired, stressed, and I'm thinking about returning back to pornography? These are defensive strategies. You wait for something to happen, then you react in the moment through tools that we can provide you. And yes, we do have that built into our curriculum. There are a lot of times we to, need to rely on those defensive strategies. But if you begin to play offense, if you begin to actually pull some levers in your life to change your neurochemistry, to begin to reboot and rewire your brain, change how you see the world when you begin to step out and operate in it. If you can play offense, then you don't need as much defense. So in today's video, I wanna talk about two offensive strategies, two habits that I've used in the last four years to remain 100% porn free, radically transform my life, reboot and rewire your brain. We've been able to create a movement, a company, a podcast, a mission that is now serving men at the highest level all across the globe. And I think these two offensive strategies, if you begin to embody them, you begin to take action on them, they begin to live them out every single day, you will win your morning, you'll win the evening, but, but what you're going to do is you're gonna be win the battle in between morning and evening, where you struggle with, where you have those triggers, where you have those urges. And I think the first thing, and this has been a fundamental piece of my life and of my recovery and how I've been able to stay clean for the last four years, is starting the day every single morning with a state of gratitude. Now this can start the minute you wake up, this can start the minute your eyes open. What are the first thoughts that occur and appear? Are you automatically thinking about, God, how do I go without pornography? Are you automatically thinking about how bad things have gotten? Are you automatically thinking about well, who, what do I need to respond to in the outside world? Or you take a few minutes when you're lying there in bed and thank God for another day. You take a few minutes when you're lying there in bed, maybe look over and kiss your wife and thank the Lord that you have a beautiful woman in your life that has embarked on this journey. Now, I believe actually taking a layer deeper and having a written gratitude practice is where the real change begins to take place. Because when you take your thoughts and you use pen and paper to jot them down, you shift the processing within your brain into the prefrontal cortex, which is the part of your brain that has been most impacted by pornography. Yes, porn does cause brain damage. When you shift the processing into the prefrontal cortex, now your brain is operating in a way that if you just think about things, not going to have the full experience. Have some gratitude, the minister eyes wake, but take a couple minutes, take three, four, five minutes in your daily journal. Think about two or three things, maybe from the previous day. Maybe you had an amazing conversation with Becky at the grocery store. Maybe you had an incredible workout, one where your gym buddy showed up, you guys were pushing each other hard, sets, everything was crushing it. Maybe you're grateful for just that moment, that one hour. You had an amazing dinner, conversation with the family. Think about it, write it down, but then embody what actually being grateful for those experiences is and how it makes you feel. Now, what this is gonna do is this is gonna shift you into a state of gratitude. So as you navigate throughout the world, you're no longer thinking about, God, I'm a victim to my porn addiction. God, my life is so bad because I can't overcome it. You're beginning to look for more things to be grateful for because A, number one, you know tomorrow you're gonna have to go through the same practice again. But we know the brain and how it works and how it operates. We have this part within our brain that's called the reticular activating system. Its primary job is to bring to light things that are important. And I believe when we start our day from a state of gratitude every single morning, the world, our brain, whatever we want to call it, will show us and present us more things to be grateful for. So the first offensive strategy that I believe has helped me over the last four years, and it's something that we encourage 
every single man in our program. It's written into our curriculum to spend three to five minutes every single morning a day a couple things that you can be grateful for. The second daily habit is going to help you win the evening. And this is our daily reflection journal. This is where we take five to 10 minutes at the end of the day and we spend some time thinking about what we've been thinking about. And here's what this does. Throughout the day, when you're busy and you're jumping from task to task and you're getting the kids to practice, you're fulfilling your duties and responsibilities as a husband and as a father, your thoughts are just rapid firing in you. Somewhere between 12 to 60,000 thoughts on a daily basis. You're not stopping to think about all of these things. Many of these are repeated patterns due to our previous programming. Many of these are repeated patterns because we haven't extracted the lesson out of the thought yet. But if we take five, 10, 20 minutes at the end of the day to think about what we've been thinking about. You know, when I was sitting there at the red light, why didn't my thoughts instantly take me to think about a beautiful blonde woman that I'd seen the previous day at Starbucks? Well, because I remember the time that I saw a different type of woman in a place and then I went and sought out pornography. Well, that's interesting because I no longer want to do that and I'm becoming the man that no longer thinks about women in an objectifying way. So by getting clear on what you were thinking and then recorrecting it, rewriting the narrative that you tell yourself, you're now creating new thought patterns, new ways of thinking, new ways of acting, new ways of believing. And when you begin to do this, what happens is you open up that space. This is called metacognition in the world of clinical psychology. This gives you time and space to pause and respond versus react in the moments of, of desperation. So initially, maybe your wife yells at you when you get home every single day. You instantly react and you yell back at her. But if you spend some time, is why was I yelling back at my wife to get clear on it? You open up that space. So the next time that same incident occurs, you don't initially react. Now you pause and respond and think from an intelligent, kind of rational, logical way. Hey, babe, I understand. Like I've made you feel this way. Did you actually know that when you speak to me like that, this is what triggers me, this is what triggers my thought pattern can open up some communication. But you didn't bottle it up. You didn't rest it up inside here. And we know when we bottle things up, we rest it inside here, somewhere down the road, we're gonna need to release that. And brother, I'm telling you, that's why you're using pornography. So the two habits in my life has been starting gratitude every single day, three to five minutes, writing it out in my journal and spending a handful of minutes, five, 10 minutes tops at the end of the day to really get clear on what I was thinking about, what thoughts served me in a positive way, and what thoughts could potentially be destructive if I wasn't taking proper action. Now I've talked about this, we've put both of these into our curriculum. So if you're ready to take some action and you believe that you are ready to overcome your pornography addiction, what we've done is we've designed a 16 week porn addiction recovery program that walks you through exactly what you need to do over the next 16 weeks. I'm gonna link it down there in the first pinned comment below, but it's of course, Reboot Your Life by Rebuilt Recovery. And if you use promo code FREEDOM, you will actually save $100 off the entire cost of the course with a 365 day money back guarantee, no questions asked. But Frank Fritz from Rebuilt Recovery, begin to walk these habits out daily, begin to play offense against your porn addiction and you will not need as much defense in your recovery. God bless you guys. We'll see you in the next one.